The goal of bibliographic citation is to direct the user to the original source of your information. If your citation is inaccurate, the reader cannot find the information and therefore it is useless. Templates are a convenient way to cite web resources, but they're not a substitute for your brain. Templates like EasyBib are only helpful if you use them to organize information into correct citations. If you use the autocite function without checking to make sure the information is correct, it will often be incorrect, very often. Well-formatted incorrect information is still bad information. You are better off having a citation that looks less than perfect, but contains correct information rather than this. So how do we avoid this? Well, after you've entered your URL, you need to look for the information that the template is asking you for. So you need to always keep the page you're citing open in a separate tab, and you want to toggle between the EasyBib page and the source you're citing. In the source we're citing here, the problems appear from the first field. So if you look at the first line here where the article title is, you'll see the lesson plan numbers are being pulled into the article title, and these must be removed. The next line is the author. When you see angry red boxes, it's important to make sure that you look for the information being sought. Although many resources do not have named authors, the majority do, so you should always be on the lookout for them. Most authored online articles will have the author's name at the top of the page near the article title. Some are listed at the bottom of the article, but this one is at the top of the page and it is very obvious. Just because a box isn't outlined in angry red doesn't mean that you should assume the contents are correct. In this case, EasyBib has pulled the same information for the website title field and the article title field. Web articles with titles that are identical to the title of the overall website are very rare in real life. In a thousand websites, you may find one or two. However, they are extremely common in bibliographic citations that are generated from EasyBib's autocite function. In addition to making it harder for your reader to locate a source that is improperly titled, this is an immediate tip-off to your teacher or librarian that you have done a poor job of using EasyBib. The title of the overall website is usually the topmost and largest title on the web page. It is often found at the top left corner of the page. It is sometimes in the middle, but in our example, it is located at the top left corner. The name of the site's publisher is usually found at the bottom of the page just after the copyright date. When looking for publication dates, you will often find the original publication date at the top of the article, and it's usually close to the author's name. Always give the most specific date that you can find. If there is a date and a month and a year, include all three. In our case, there is no date at the top of the article to indicate the specific date when it was published or most recently revised. In this case, we will use the copyright date for the site, which is located at the bottom of the page after the copyright symbol. We will only enter the year of publication because we do not have any more specific information. Now we are ready to finally cite our source.
And you can see here what it looks like and what it should look like and what it looked like without any human intervention. So don't turn in horrible, inaccurate citations. Make sure to check each field before you create your citations in EasyBib.